What is going on guys? It's me, Severin7, and today you're getting casual, Severin. We are going to be doing a super casual video. I'm just going to be talking about Las Vegas, uh, everything that I learned there, uh, talking about some of the new information that came out at Magic on Las Vegas, things I'm excited about, things I'm a little less excited about, anything that went on. And we're going to kind of turn the comment section of this video into a little bit of a Q&A. So if there's anything that I discuss in this video that you have questions about or that I don't go into enough detail for your liking, leave a comment below, ask your questions, and I will get to every single one of those as promptly as possible. Possible because I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about every single thing that I talk about today. There will be videos in the future going over spoilers because there were just way too many for me to go over in one video over the weekend. And so, yeah, we're just going to talk about stuff and let's get right into it. So, I went to MagicCon Las Vegas this past weekend. It was a ton of fun. I ran into a few of you guys at the convention center and it was really nice to get to meet some of you guys and, and actually. Put a face to some of the names that are in my streams and in my comment sections uh it was also nice because i made some new friends met some new people and got some new people to the channel uh, i got to meet saffron olive which was really awesome i uh, ran into reed duke from worlds and it was just a really great time i got to play in a lot of events i got to get a lot of really neat uh merchandise while i was there and it was just an, an experience if you've never been able to go to a magic con or if you've ever been on the fence about whether you should go it's a hundred percent worth it whether you're playing in events or you're just walking around meeting people there was just so many incredible vendors so many incredible things going on it was just the most fun i've ever had at an event so a hundred percent worth it if you're thinking about going in the future and you haven't decided whether or not it's worth it it is it's it's worth it it's great so things that came out of magic con las vegas so we learned about the 2025 lineup and it is quite interesting. So they have decided to really kind of go all in on the universe of beyond. Now, I don't know 100% how I feel about it. I'm not like mad about it like a lot of people are, but I'm not like super stoked about it either. So what they've decided to do is all future tentpole universes beyond releases. So full sets that are not magic related. So in Final Fantasy will be the first one next year in June are going to be standard legal and that and pioneer legal as well. They're going to be legal in all formats, essentially. So the reasoning they gave was that it makes it easier for players to understand set legality of sets uh, which I can understand because like when certain universes beyond sets come out especially on arena people get really confused that they're not standard legal or what sets they are legal in or you know is it legal in alchemy no it's not legal in alchemy it's only legal in historic you know or timeless and people get real confused so I can understand that to a degree I do think that it's gonna make people who want to play standard really divided you're gonna have the people who are just really excited because they have the money and they have the time to invest in you know multiple sets a year and you're gonna have the people who don't have a lot of money and who are frustrated and overwhelmed with the amount of product that's coming out every year because this is basically gonna make six standard sets per year where I think we were only getting three or four prior to that so it's a lot it's gonna make standard much more interesting for sure because there's gonna be more shakeups more often so standards not gonna be stale for any real length of time but I can understand people frustration product fatigue things like that and then you're also put in a position where if you don't like an ip of one of the universes beyonds you can't really get away from it anymore like at least before if you know when lord of the rings came out if you didn't like lord of the rings you could just not play modern you could play pioneer and standard and not have to see those cards now it doesn't matter where you go you're gonna have you're gonna see those cards and if you want to be competitive you may even have to play those cards so you might have to invest in an ip that you're not super excited about like if you hate final fantasy you're not going to be excited about the final fantasy cards so I, i'm not 100 percent sure how this is going to go over with the community but mark rosewater did address it after the con uh because there was a lot of backlash i mean at least from their perspective from sales and comments on it and people's happiness with the universes beyond sets apparently they're doing incredibly well and people want more of them and want them legal in more formats so we'll have to see how true that is obviously the loudest people are going to be the people who've been playing the longest and care the most about the game but that doesn't necessarily represent the entire community for every one person who's complaining about it there's thousands of other people who might not be so we'll see uh as far as the lineup goes the first set coming out next year is standard is going to be aether drift it, it, it looks like it's kind of like a death 
death race set across a couple of planes. It seems to have heavy Kaladesh vibes. I, I think they renamed the plane or something. You'll have to correct me if I'm wrong on that, but it's got Kaladeshi vibes. You know, there's gear hulks and things like that. We'll go over some of those spoilers in another video, but it looks interesting but very different. So I'm not sure how I'm feeling about that. Then we're going back to Tarkir with Tarkir Dragonstorm in April. Uh, June will be Final Fantasy. That'll be the first standard legal universes beyond set. So I love Final Fantasy, so I'm excited about it, but I'm not 100% sure how everyone else is gonna feel about it, but we'll have to see. Then we've got Edge of Eternity coming out in August, and then they haven't announced the dates for the next two sets, but we've got a Marvel Spider-Man set coming out and another Universes Beyond set that they haven't announced at the end of the year next year. Uh, the first set coming out in January though will actually be Innistrad Remastered, which will be not standard legal, obviously, uh, but it's gonna be a remastered Innistrad set with cards from all the Innistrad sets uh, with Edgar Markov making his reappearance for the first time in a long time as a reprint, as well as a new mechanic that they're doing moving forward called Chase Cards, where they will have one card for each set that is serialized. That's like the, that's like the card to get. Uh, I don't know if that means they're gonna stop doing multiple serialized cards in a set, like where, how they have like several cards in the set that are serialized, but I know that they will have at least one serialized card per set that is like the chase rare or card of that set. And in this case, it's gonna be Edgar Markov, which should make a lot of people happy because it's a very expensive commander and it's a very good commander. So we'll have to see how that goes. Moving forward, we had a big change to combat. It basically, they're changing how combat damage assignment works so prior to this change when you would attack into a board of creatures if your opponent blocked with multiple creatures you would choose which order those creatures were blocking and then you would have to assign lethal damage to the first creature in that lineup to deal damage to the second creature uh, and this would allow for people to after damage blocks were ordered, pump a creature up and save that creature that was put in front and basically completely nullify the attack because now both the creatures that blocked survived, the creature that attacked died, and it was just a feel bad for the player attacking. The way they're changing it now is so that there is no more ordering to blocking. The way this is gonna work is that once blockers are declared, the attacking player can assign their damage however they want. That means if they have a 5-5 five five and then they're attacking into multiple creatures, they can assign three of that damage to this creature and two of that damage to this creature, and that's after all effects. So basically once the defending player passes priority, so like let's say they wanted to cast giant growth on something to save a creature, once they've passed priority from that position, they can no longer interact with those creatures before combat damage happens. So once you move to the combat damage step, it's done. There's no more chance to react, there's no chance to save a creature, and the attacking player can assign that damage however they want which can really shake some things up i mean the fact that you used to have to assign lethal damage to the first creature in the blocking order meant that you couldn't split the damage up in a profitable way so like in a position where maybe you're attacking with a three three into two four fours or, or two three you know something like or, or just bigger creatures where you could assign that damage in a way that maybe you have a damage based board sweeper like pyroclasm or something now you can assign that damage in a way where when your creature dies their creatures have enough damage on them that those creatures will succumb to pyroclasm or massacre worm or something like that so it's kind of interesting if you have questions about that put them in the comments below uh i will definitely do my best to answer those questions because it, it is a little confusing uh but there's also articles i can try to link in the description to give you guys information about that so yeah it's it's a big change it's a very big change we haven't had a change like this since damage was removed from the stack i don't think so yeah other than that um we are getting a SpongeBob secret layer, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Uh, wearing a SpongeBob shirt right now to kind of, you know, celebrate the mood with that. It's not going to be standard legal though. Don't worry. It's not a temple set. It's just a secret layer. But still, it's SpongeBob magic cards. They will be legal somewhere.
<laughs> you're gonna see spongebob on your table somewhere eventually in a game of magic the gathering so i don't know how you feel about that but it's happening so <laughs> uh, other than that it was just a really fun time it was a fun time and foundations is looking insane foundations is so crazy i'm not gonna go over a bunch of spoilers in this video because there's just way too many um but it's one of the biggest sets for standard that we're gonna get in a long long time we are getting the main base set which will be available in the booster boxes, which is gonna be 290 something cards. And then on top of that, the Foundations Starter Collection is going to have many, many, many rares and mythics and uncommons that are not in the base set of boosters. They will be the same cards in every starter collection. From what I'm reading, they'll be the same cards in every starter collection. So each starter collection will have the same collection of cards, plus like boosters and things like that. It's gonna be really interesting to see how having this many new cards in standard shakes things up because there's some crazy reprints. There's just so many, like we're getting like Elf Lords galore, we're getting, all kinds of crazy dragons we're getting amazing reprints from just all over the place uh, it's you're gonna have to keep an eye out for my spoiler video because i'm not gonna go over uh, i'm gonna have to try to keep that spoiler video a little bit shorter than i might normally do for spoiler videos because there's just too many so i'll probably just go over mostly the most notable stuff that i can think of but it's a lot it's a lot of new cards like you're we're getting like mazes end and the guild gates back in standard we're getting giada's coming back but not in the none of this is in the main set but it's all standard legal so these starter collections are actually going to be very valuable because there's gonna be a lot of cards and reprints that are gonna be available in standard in those that aren't in the play boosters. And it's guaranteed that those cards are in the collection, so it's a guaranteed value. So if they're cards that you wanna play with and they're cards that you like, it's gonna be a great value for you. It'll be a great value for new players. They're gonna have a beginner box, which even has like a bunch of starter decks already built in it and a how to build a deck guide. Like this set is just looking really great for bringing a bunch of new people to this game. All those foundations cards should be available on Arena because the arena's standard is true to paper so they have to print anything that's legal and standard on paper on arena as well so we should see those foundation starter collection cards on arena too but i don't know how they're gonna work that out they may have to they may like make like a bundle on the arena store where you can purchase all those cards at once kind of like an anthology or it may just be one of those things where you have to craft them i hope that they'll make some kind of bundle available so that people don't have to waste all their wild cards crafting those awesome cards from the starter collection but this set is looking great there's a lot of very powerful cards in this set there's a lot of very powerful things for each archetype there's great control cards there's great mid-range cards there's good aggro stuff but it finally feels like we might have like a really good balance again of just decks being able to counteract each other it doesn't feel like there's going to be one deck that just rules over everything else and forces everything else to comply with its power it's a lot of stuff a lot of information so if you have have any questions or there's anything you'd like to know if you want to know anything about my experience at vegas uh just drop a comment below uh this is mostly for you guys for my subscribers uh if you are seeing this as not a subscriber make sure you hit that like button hit that subscribe button i will be doing a bunch of different videos spoilers talking about the new stuff coming out uh there'll probably be at least one more standard video popped in there somewhere and I will do my best to get back to streaming next week. I wasn't able to stream last night because I was having technical difficulties, so I apologized about that to those of you who were looking forward to it. Uh, but I should be able to get back to streaming next Wednesday, so look forward to that. And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one.